speaker, we have Spencer Talkington. He's going to tell about uh, infrared optical properties of quasi 1D topological insulators. Uh, so, uh, Spencer Talkington, when you are you ready? Okay. Oh, can you hear me? icon on the computer is coming through. Let's see. Am I able to hear me? Yes. Okay, excellent. Then I'll begin. Uh, yeah, thank you to the organizers for inviting me. Uh, I'm a graduate student at UPenn, uh, and I'd like to share some of the work that I've done over the last couple of years with uh, Pan Zhang. Uh, so, in particular, uh, looking at optical properties of quasi-1D topological insulators uh, using effective type binding models, in particular with model parameters fitted for the bismuth halides, uh, but that might be tunable uh, for other quasi-1D materials. So, let's get into it. Okay, uh, so first off, uh, why quasi-1D materials? I'll make this quick. Uh, these are one of the last talks, uh, and uh, we're all motivated to study this. It's all about getting the exotic states. So from a single particle perspective, uh, we can get weak TIs, uh, where we have an even number of drag tones on some of the surfaces. Uh, and this was first realized uh, and seen in ARPES uh, measurements of beta bismuth iodide. Uh, additionally, uh, there have been some proposals for higher order topological insulating uh, states on the uh, hinges of uh, the alpha phases of these bismuth halides. Additionally, uh, as we've just uh, seen, uh, the, in quasi-1D materials, there can be exotic uh, many particle states, such as Levenger liquids, uh, or potentially exciton condensates, uh, particularly uh, at certain filling fractions uh, of these materials. Uh, so how do we realize a weak TI? Uh, well, there were initially uh, two proposals. One was to stack uh, weakly coupled quantum spin hole layers. But these uh, turned out to be uh, not so easy to synthesize, uh, and the metamaterials were relatively complex. Uh, an alternate proposal uh, was to look at quasi-1D materials, uh, and here's one from uh, FAM's group about six years ago, uh, where they looked at the effects uh, of strain on the beta phases uh, of the bismuth halides. Uh, and here you see that in unstrained beta bismuth iodide, there's a weak uh, topological insulating uh, phase, uh, at zero strain uh, with a band gap that's uh, substantially greater than the thermal uh, active, uh, thermal temperature uh, of room temperature. Uh, additionally, uh, there have been uh, relatively recently proposals for higher order TIs uh, in these materials uh, where the alpha phases, uh, there's a dimerization uh, of the layered structure uh, and that leads uh, to opening a band gap in the surface uh, States uh, and then within those surface states, uh, edge states can then form. Okay, uh, so these are all Van der Waals materials, and uh, generically, we'd expect that there would be good cleavage planes, uh, which enables easy access to surface and edge states. So in 2D, the canonical example uh, is graphene and graphite, but there are hundreds of other uh, 2D materials. Uh, for example, tungsten ditelluride, as we've seen, but uh, many, many more. They can be stacked and twisted. So, but there are relatively few uh, uh, 3D materials composed of Van der Waals bonded 1D chains. Uh, and the bismuth halides uh, are the only ones known, uh, at least in the uh, topological materials database, uh, to be chemically stable uh, and to exhibit these uh, weak topological insulating or higher order topological uh, insulating states on the surfaces and edges. Uh, so looking uh, at the structure of these, uh, so looking uh, down the chain direction, uh, we'll uh, see that they uh, align to form 3D materials, and they have two natural cleavage planes. One along a 0, 0, 1 surface, uh, which forms uh, trivial uh, insulating states, uh, and one which can form uh, weak or strong TIs, uh, depending on the level of strain, uh, and uh, once uh, the systems dimerize after a thermal, uh, thermally activated uh, structural transition, uh, can form higher order topological uh, edge states. Uh, and here is a photo uh, from Bing Liv of these crystals. So you can see that they can get relatively large and very pristine. Uh, so these are uh, real materials uh, that can be synthesized. Okay, uh, so looking uh, at the states that we could hope to realize, uh, there's both a high temperature state of the beta phases uh, and a low temperature state. Uh, here, all the expressions are given at zero strain. If you strain it or compress it, uh, the phases may change. Uh, but there can be uh, strong topological insulator, weak topological insulator, and higher order topological insulator edge states. 
Uh, and here, uh, we're going to look at uh, construct constructing single particle nearest neighbor type binding models, uh, fitting uh, parameters to those models uh, from DFT simulations, uh, and then looking at the optical properties of those models. Uh, so first, uh, to review some of uh, the uh, work that's been done using non-optical techniques on these materials. Uh, there's been a lot of evidence uh, for the presence of uh, two surface uh, drag cones on the 100 surface of these materials, but no drag cones on the 001 surface, uh, indicating that these are, uh, in fact, weak topological insulators. Uh, additionally, uh, there is real space uh, evidence uh, in terms of conductance, differential conductance, uh, that there are quantum spin hall uh, states on the edges. Uh, and there is some supporting evidence for higher order topological insulating states on the edges, but that's limited by the spatial resolution of ARPES because the spot size is larger uh, than uh, the step edge. Uh, that means uh, that there will be some responses being measured from states other than those on the edge. Uh, additionally, in transport, there has been some measurements of pressure induced superconductivity uh, and a field uh, induced metal insulator transition. Uh, so there's an extreme uh, high field limit in which the schumann kalb haas oscillations cease, uh, and then there's this uh, growth behavior. Okay, uh, so given that there's uh, all of these other techniques uh, that have already elucidated uh, that there are these uh, rich single particle uh, states on the surfaces and edges of these materials, why would we want to do optics? Uh, well, it comes down to that we can both characterize these materials. Uh, characterization has been done by these other methods. But essentially, uh, in a longer term view, uh, this could be used to create optoelectronic devices. Uh, and in particular, I'm going to go through uh, three possibilities and three things uh, that we could see uh, in these materials. One is a giant and anisotropic bulk response. So the standard infrared uh, charge couple diodes are made from mercury cadmium telluride, uh, perhaps uh, notable uh, for the uh, HGTE and HDCDTE. Uh, were first used to uh, realize uh, topological insulators in about 2006, 2007, but these have a gain uh, of roughly 10 to the 3 uh, per centimeter. Uh, meanwhile, they're with greater band inversions uh, have greater gains, uh, so they're more responsive as charge couple diodes. Uh, and we see that up above the band edge, uh, the bismuthalides are right in the mix of other materials. But compo uh, compared to the other materials, these are more anisotropic. So potentially they could be used to create uh, anisotropic uh, charge coupled diodes. Uh, so that's a speculative uh, direction, but we can look at what the uh, gains in optical conductivities would be. <clears throat> Next, we can look at signatures for the surface and edge states. Uh, and we can see uh, that these will be uh, fit by an elliptical drag cone instead of the uh, circular drag cone that you'd have in graphene. Uh, and this corresponds uh, to the fact that along the strand, uh, there's greatly enhanced conductivity uh, where uh, in other directions it's suppressed. Uh, and you know, in fact, that will correspond to seeing uh, that there could be absorbances up to 15 to 20 uh, percent of the instant light uh, if it was polarized in the direction of the strand, where it might be uh, something like a fraction of a percent uh, in the direction perpendicular to that. Uh, so that could, is another interesting feature. Uh, additionally, uh, and finally, uh, we're going to briefly look at quasi-1D surface plasma polaritons where by quasi-1D, uh, we mean that the quality factor in one direction is much greater than in the other direction, uh, perhaps leading uh, to some quasi-1D behavior there. Okay, so we've made it through the introduction. Uh, then I'm going to uh, introduce the models uh, we've constructed, uh, go through the optical properties, uh, talk about uh, the plasmons, uh, and then wrap up. Okay, uh, so first off, uh, in uh, FAM's uh, group's previous work, uh, they looked at first principles DFT, uh, constructed a maximally localized Vanier function type binding model, uh, and then uh, took the best fit uh, to a nearest neighbor uh, type binding model. So this would form four band models uh, in the continuum uh, for the beta phase structures and uh, eight bands for the dimerized uh, models of the alpha phases. Uh, and then from that, one can then go ahead and integrate the Kubel formula uh, in single particle, obtain the optical conductivity, and then get optical response properties and the properties of plasmons. Uh, continuing on for the beta phase bulk, uh, one can construct uh, the layer Hamiltonians and then couple them to form the bulk. In particular, one will want more uh, structures that preserve inversion symmetry, since that's required by the point group of these materials, which is C2M. Uh, one can write down all the terms that obey that uh, and then fit those uh, to the DFT. So then one has a set of uh, decoupled layers, uh, and then 
uh, one can construct the bulk Hamiltonian by adding all the interlayer terms that respect the inversion symmetry. So we know different uh, on-site potentials, uh, no different uh, tunneling between them, uh, so there's no dimerization in the beta phase. Uh, so there's the coupling. And then in the alpha phase, uh, we're instead going to want a dimerization. We start out with the same layers, but then we're going to have different inner layer terms uh, and different uh, tunneling terms that alternate. So it's very similar to the schreiber heger model, uh, where there's going to be these inner dimer uh, and extra dimer terms uh, that are slightly different from each other and slightly different uh, on-site potentials. Uh, so there we can start out with the same layers, uh, add additional symmetry uh, allowed terms uh, to change the uh, intralayer behavior, and then uh, add extra layer behavior uh, corresponding uh, to hopping between the layers. So instead of having single sites as we would in the schuster for heger model, we can then have single layers uh, and construct uh, a similar alpha phase bulk model. Uh, so looking at the particular uh, structures that we have here, uh, we can look at the inversion centers indicated here by the red dots, uh, where we have inversion centers both in the layers and between for the beta phase, but then for the alpha bismuth bromide, they're only in the layers, or alpha bismuth iodide, they're only between the layers. Okay, so now that we have uh, the bulk models, uh, we can then interface them with a vacuum, so uh, impose topological boundary conditions, uh, and then see what surface states and what edge states we'll get. Uh, so from that, we can end up getting our surface states, uh, and then we can also get our edge states as well, uh, where the uh, parameters are fixed by being consistent uh, with the bulk. Here on the right-hand side, you'll see indicated in the teal, uh, here are the uh, edge states of the higher-order topological insulator uh, alpha phase uh, structures. Okay, uh, so now that we have the models, we can go ahead uh, and integrate to figure out the optical conductivity. Uh, so here, it's just uh, looking at the matrix elements of uh, the velocity operators uh, in the relevant directions. Uh, so there's a Kubo formula calculation. What makes this difficult uh, compared to uh, some other materials uh, is that we're interested in the low temperature, low scattering limit. So we need to integrate over a lot of points uh, to, to converge the optical con conductivity. As well as we're only interested in some regions of the Brillouin zone, but the regions we're interested in will be very flat uh, and very spread out, in particular along the Z to L to M line uh, of uh, the Brillouin zone. So to do that, we uniformly sample the Brillouin zone and then recursively refine, so starting out with big chunks of it and then refining over the regions where uh, there are uh, close to energy conserving transitions until we converge. Okay, uh, so looking back at what we get from the type mining models, uh, we get band structures that are very similar to the DFT at low energies and have the uh, topological characteristics of the materials. At higher energies, they differ, uh, but at low energies, they should be relatively trustworthy. Here, the energy scale is the IR instead of the terahertz or optical. So we focus on, on the uh, infrared optical response. Uh, and here we see that all the low energy physics occurs along this gamma to Z to M plane. Uh, and that suggests that there will be very anisotropic optics because if you look around like X or K or Y or J, there just isn't any low energy physics going on there. Uh, so those states uh, will not contribute to the optical response. Uh, and in fact, that's precisely what we see uh, in the bulk response, is that along the strand direction, the optical conductivity is greatly enhanced, whereas in the other directions, uh, it is quite suppressed. Uh, and to note from a quantitative perspective, this optical conductivity uh, of 10 to the 5 uh, Siemens per meter, uh, or uh, 10 to the 3 uh, segments per centimeter, uh, is uh, a, uh, a large number, uh, and it's about uh, 10 times larger than that for uh, mercury cadmium telluride, which is used for uh, infrared photodetectors, uh, the charge couple diodes. Uh, so that's a, uh, potentially interesting, as well as the fact that it's uh, directionally uh, anisotropic. Okay, uh, so comparing this to an experiment, uh, the only uh, optical experiment I could find uh, with the bismuth halides was looking uh, at the bulk optical absorbance of alpha bismuth bromide. So in particular, uh, these samples were grown on infrared transparent uh, substrates of calcium fluoride, uh, and then looking at the linear optical response. So these samples were doped, uh, so the Fermi energy here you can see uh, is set at zero, uh, and then uh, there is a uh, transition uh, there to the band edge at about uh, 0.2 electron volts, uh, and uh, then the states turn on from there. Uh, here we didn't include any intraband transitions, uh, so that's why we don't match uh, the blue below. 
but it's uh, interesting to note that even uh, just using an eight band model here, we're able to come uh, very close to the experimental results here uh, when the only things we we're focused on was the low energy structural or as well as uh, the uh, topological properties of the bands. Okay, so now that we've looked at the bulk, we can continue on into the surface states. Uh, and here, again, the key uh, characteristic is the quasi one dimensionality in terms of uh, the Fermi velocity being much larger in the strands than it is in the direction perpendicular to the strands. So here we see uh, that the beta phases are gapless. Uh, the alpha phases are gapped uh, by the dimerization uh, of the materials uh, that occurs at low temperature. Uh, and consequently, uh, we're going to uh, see uh, zero density of states at uh, zero energy for the alpha phases uh, where there's a, a continuum of energies uh, for the beta phases. Uh, in particular, uh, the beta bismuth bromide uh, in this model is going to be a, a weak topological insulator. It has two Dirac cones uh, on the 100 surface. So the beta bismuth iodide uh, is going to be a strong topological insulator uh, in this model. Uh, of course, if you change the strain, uh, then you're changing uh, the uh, electronic properties, and then you're going to potentially tune between uh, strong and weak topological insulators, uh, but that's something we don't address here. Uh, and then we see uh, that alpha bismuth bromide uh, and alpha bismuth iodide uh, exhibit more uh, Van Hove singularities uh, corresponding to the fact uh, that they have more drag cones uh, and they're also uh, gapped there. So there's going to be uh, somewhat more complicated uh, optical properties for those materials, at least for the surface states. Uh, revisiting uh, the drag cone model, what we'd expect for uh, 2D drag uh, fermions is this universal optical uh, absorbance and optical conductivity independent of frequency. Uh, and for elliptic Dirac cones, uh, we get something very similar, except for it's modulated by the Fermi velocities. So there we see that uh, if we're looking at sigma BB along the strand direction, uh, this will be uh, greatly enhanced and we could get an optical conductivity and optical absorbance that would uh, greatly exceed that of graphene. And graphene was already notable for having an absorbance of about 2.3% per layer but here, if the ratio of the Fermi velocities in the two directions is 10 to 1, then you're going to have uh, an optical conductivity uh, that's going to be uh, 10 times that of graphene and an absorbance that's 10 times that of graphene uh, in the strand direction, but a tenth of it in the direction that's perpendicular. So here the optical conductivity is going to be strongly anisotropic, originating uh, from the uh, anisotropic structure of these materials. Um, and uh, then we can look at the derivation. Uh, it's relatively quick to go through. Um, and then we can look at what we actually find for these materials. So integrating over the uh, surface Brumont zones, we end up finding the optical conductivity. For the beta bismuth uh, bromide, uh, it looks exactly like uh, graphene, just uh, one part is enhanced uh, and the other one uh, is suppressed, where uh, along the chain direction, uh, there's much greater optical conductivity and absorbance, the other direction is suppressed. Uh, and what we can see, uh, is that when we rescale these by a scalar multiple, uh, corresponding uh, to the difference uh, in Fermi velocities, uh, these line up surprisingly well. Uh, what I found surprising here is that even though alpha bismuth bromide and alpha bismuth iodide uh, don't fit uh, elliptic drag cones uh, well, uh, you can't linearize them that well and they have gaps in them, uh, they still hold up uh, fairly well to this analysis in terms of rescaling and uh, fitting over each other. Okay, uh, so moving on to uh, surface plasma and polaritons, uh, these are a near field effect uh, that perform in materials with negative permittivities. Uh, for example, uh, in the region of an STM tip, uh, we might expect that plasmons would form where there would be regions of higher and lower electron density, illustrated here uh, with concentric circles, uh, and then they can form plasma and polaritons uh, by being stabilized by an interaction with light. Uh, so here we note it's concentric, so this is 2D. Uh, these have been uh, realized conventionally in materials such as uh, silver, uh, but also in 2D materials such as twisted bilayer graphene. Here, uh, we don't think there will be any uh, 3D plasmons uh, because the, optical the imaginary part of the optical conductivity is never positive, so the real part of the permittivity will never be negative, and hence uh, they will uh, exponentially decay uh, in time. Uh, and if we look at uh, plasmons, they're described by a quality factor uh, that's going to be the ratio of the imaginary to the real part of the optical conductivity. However, uh, we might expect to see surface plasmon polaritons on the 100 surface originating uh, from the elliptic Dirac fermions uh, of these materials. 
So looking at what we could actually find in terms of quality factors uh, in plasma wavelengths, uh, we see that there uh, are in fact uh, anisotropic uh, quality factors and wavelengths uh, that correspond uh, to uh, often uh, for the beta phases, we're going to see that the quality factor is enhanced uh, in the strand direction where it's suppressed in the direction uh, perpendicular to the strand direction. Uh, however, uh, looking at the absolute values of these quality factors, they're actually relatively low. Quality factors for other plasmons can be uh, 10 to the 2 uh, of the order 10 to the 2, where here we see they're 10 to the 0 to 10 to the 1. Uh, so that's something uh, that would be limiting uh, for technological applications. Where we see the deep, uh, dips and peaks, those correspond to the uh, Van Hope singularities of these materials. Uh, thinking about uh, what would happen over time uh, if a surface pl plasmon polariton was generated, uh, the difference in quality factors might mean that it decays uh, in one direction uh, perpendicular to the strand, but then is preserved in the direction along the strand. Uh, so that could perhaps form quasi-1D surface plasmon polaritons. Okay, uh, so wrapping up, uh, we have three results. One is a large and anisotropic bulk response. Uh, a response whose gain exceeds that of mercury, cadmium, telluride, photodiodes, uh, but is also anisotropic uh, compared to other materials that have larger gains. Uh, and compared with uh, other materials, uh, we see this anisotropy. Uh, a second result uh, is that for uh, the surface states, uh, we see uh, an elliptic direct tone uh, behavior, uh, and that's going to lead to uh, both an enhancement in the direction along the chain and a suppression perpendicular to it of the optical conductivity and absorbance. Uh, and this corresponds to the quasi-1D on each of these materials. Uh, and finally, and most speculatively, uh, it might be possible uh, to create uh, surface plasma uh, polaritons uh, on the 100 surface of these materials uh, that could be useful uh, for uh, quantum emitters uh, because of the small uh, size of uh, plasmons as cavities, uh, they form uh, quite good high temperature emitters. Uh, and then if these formed one dimensional cavities, uh, they could form uh, one dimensional emitters leading to uh, the formation of polarized light. Okay, uh, so in summary, 1D materials have very interesting single particle states uh, and many particle states as well as is being elucidated by other measurements. Uh, and this has been studied in real space, momentum space and through transport studies. But uh, the optoelectronics applications and studies of these materials uh, can be interesting as well. Uh, and we'd like to uh, acknowledge our funding and I'd like to uh, thank Fan for his guidance on this project. Uh, thank you, and I'd like to open it up to questions. Okay, thank you, Spencer, for your nice talk. So, um, do we have questions for Spencer? Uh, hello, Spencer. <clears throat> could you could you go back to the uh, graphs on optical connectivity about the rescaled one? Could you explain more about the uh, how you did the rescale and uh, what's the motivation? Right. Uh, so if you look at the uh, beta phase structures, if you look at the uh, band structures, you can uh, expand them uh, about a Dirac point, uh, and then you're going to uh, have Dirac cones, uh, but they'll be uh, anisotropic. Uh, in order to find out what the actual uh, Fermi velocities were, so to uh, find uh, these actual scalars by which to rescale, uh, we looked at the model parameters uh, and determined uh, the Fermi velocity. So determine the Fermi velocity in the strand direction uh, and the Fermi velocity perpendicular to the strand direction uh, and took the ratio. So for example, uh, in beta bismuth bromide, uh, the ratio of the Fermi velocity is, uh, was something like uh, 12. So that's where we get the 3.82, is that the Fermi velocity along the strand was about 12 times strong, uh, higher than the Fermi velocity perpendicular to it. Does that answer your question? Oh, I see. Thank you for the clear demonstration. Also, uh... Here for the for the beta phase, there's a single peak, and for alpha phase, there are two peaks. Could you explain the? Uh, uh, right. So uh, yeah, if we go back to the density of uh, density of states for these uh, materials, it may. Uh, yeah. Here, uh, that corresponds to the fact uh, that for the alpha phase, uh, we have multiple Van Hove singularities, uh, corresponding to the fact that once we dimerize, uh, we're going to have uh, eight bands or eight n bands uh, for an n-layer structure. 
So that means we dimerize, we're, we're splitting the Van Hove singularities uh, so that we have more Van Hove singularities. And that's what leads to the multiple uh, peaks in the optical conductivity uh, for the alpha phase uh, surface states. Okay, I see. So uh, is it also reflected in the plasma uh, spectrum you showed? Uh, yeah, so I think in the plasma uh, spectrum, uh, we're going to uh, end up seeing that there are going to be uh, dips in the quality factor, where there are going to be two dips in the quality factor instead of one dip in the quality factor, corresponding to the presence uh, of two Van Hove singularities. Oh, I see. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Spencer. I have a question, um, a very general question. So, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a very, there are very nice results of the anisotropy of, uh, of this uh, kind of material. So, in the past two days, we've seen many uh, great talks about the uh, topological properties of those kind of materials. So, mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, uh, light matter interactions or or um, infrared optical properties of those mm -hmm. uh, of, of those quasi one D TIs, so do you foresee any uh, interesting phenomenon uh, existed uh, in this uh, uh, quasi one D TI related to its topology? Uh... Yes, I think from a uh, very general uh, perspective, we're going to be uh, wanting to activate uh, charge carriers. Uh, so, of course, if you have the beta phases, uh, those have uh, the uh, protected state at zero energy. So there, you're always going to have uh, some electrons that you can excite to become carriers. But perhaps with the alpha phase, uh, those might be uh, more promising for uh, topological uh, uh, optoelectronic uh, applications. Uh, in terms of shining light and uh, activating charge carriers uh, from the valence into the conduction band, if that conduction band that they're being uh, excited to uh, is on a uh, surface state uh, or perhaps an edge state, uh, here uh, we think the edge state uh, optical response properties are going to be very weak, but that doesn't mean uh, that you couldn't uh, excite electrons into the higher order topological insulator uh, uh, edge states uh, and then have them uh, do something interesting. So there, like we've seen, uh, there can be quantum spall, uh, spin hall, edge states. Uh, there can be uh, other interesting edge states. So maybe it's possible uh, to activate charge carriers uh, by shining light. Uh, that's something we don't explicitly study here, uh, but it is uh, something where uh, instead of focusing on the light, we could focus on the material uh, as modulated by the light. Uh, but that wasn't the main focus here. Oh, I see. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Spencer, I, I I got a question for you. I, I was confused about the uh, the surface platform, and uh, you do okay. talk about uh, uh, their applications using this type of materials. Uh, but somewhere in your talk, you also mentioned they are forbidden. Uh, am I missing something? Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the three D uh, plasmons are forbidden. Uh, okay, so but the surface one is not forbidden. Yeah. Uh, so in order to uh, form a, a plasmon uh, that will have confinement, uh, you must have a negative real part of your permittivity. Right. Uh, and that means that you need to have a positive uh, imaginary part of your optical conductivity. Uh, but uh, for the bulk uh, materials, you never have a uh, positive imaginary part of the optical conductivity. Hence, you can never get a negative uh, uh, real part of the primitivity, and hence you can't confine 3D plasmons in these materials. But you, you can have uh, surface state plasmons uh, in these materials. Uh, so I think that's the distinction is that you can have them on the surface states, but you can't have them in the bulk in these materials. I see, thank you. Do we have any other questions for Spencer? Okay, so let's thank Spencer uh, talking there again. Um, so uh, 